Hello and welcome to Khan Clinics, our weekly health and lifestyle show powered by American Muslim Today. In each episode, we dwell in the realms of wellness, exploring the latest trends, seek expert advice, and practical tips to help you live a happy, healthier life. Our aim is to bring a broader perspective to our American audience and discuss issues that impact your daily life by interviewing guests and experts from the US and around the world. From nutrition and fitness to mental well-being and beyond, we're here to empower you with knowledge and inspiration. So whether you're looking to boost your energy, revamp your diet, or simply trying to find a balance in your daily life, you're at the right place. Join us as we embark on this journey towards a better, brighter you. I'm your host, Dr. Amir Khan, and together, let's unlock the secret to living life to the fullest. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Amir Khan, and you're here for another episode of Khan Clinics, um, powered by American Muslim Today. Today's topic um, is about anemia. What are the facts? Have you been affected? Have you seen people being affected by anemia? And if you have been, what do you do? Do you understand, is it important to know about anemia and stuff? So there's where we're going to start from. Our guest today, who's going to be talking a little bit more about anemia, is Dr. Safia Shahid. Dr. Safia Shahid is a graduate MBBS. She currently resides in Pakistan, and she'll be walking us through different aspects of uh, anemia and its treatment. But before we go on to speak to Dr. Safia, we're going to play a little video and have you guys have a look at the stuff. Why is our blood important? Pause the video here and try to think of some ideas. Our blood has many important functions, which can be stated simply as transporting substances around our body and protecting us from disease. Sometimes, though, our blood doesn't work in exactly the way it should. In this video, we will look at an example of this, anemia. Our blood is made of plasma, platelets, white blood cells and red blood cells. If a blood sample is centrifuged, i.e. spun round very fast, in blood fractionation, this is what the sample would look like. As you can see, most of the cells in the blood are red blood cells, and it's these cells that make the blood look red. Here is a basic diagram of a red blood cell, or erythrocyte. Anemia affects this type of cell. Every cubic centimeter or milliliter of blood contains 5 billion red blood cells. They are very small. Each one is only an average of 7 micrometers in diameter. One micrometer is a millionth of a meter. Red blood cells have several adaptations for carrying as much oxygen as possible around the body. The biconcave disc shape means that it has a larger surface area. They are flexible, so they can move easily through small capillaries. And you may notice from the picture that it's missing an organelle, a cell part, that almost all other eukaryotic cells have. Pause the video and see if you can think what it is. It has no nucleus. This means they have more room for oxygen, which is carried by hemoglobin molecules. Anemia is the general term for having either fewer red blood cells than normal or having an abnormally low amount of hemoglobin in each red blood cell. There are several different types of anemia, and each one has a different cause. In this video, we will discuss two. Pernicious anemia occurs when a lack of vitamin B12, or folate, causes the body to produce abnormally large red blood cells that can't function properly. Sources of vitamin B12 include fish, cheese, chicken, eggs, red meat, milk, and almonds. Iron deficiency anemia, the most common type, 
is when there is a lack of iron in the body, perhaps from a diet that is low in iron or because of blood loss or pregnancy. People who have particularly heavy periods are susceptible to this type of anemia. Symptoms can include tiredness and lack of energy, shortness of breath, noticeable heartbeats or heart palpitations, and pale skin. This is all because the red blood cells that are made are smaller than normal and sometimes irregular in shape, meaning each cell can carry less oxygen. They will also appear paler when looked at under a microscope, and the symptoms are produced because the person's body cells do not receive enough oxygen for respiration. Doctors sometimes prescribe iron tablets if someone is suffering from iron deficiency anemia. Sufferers could also increase the amount of iron in their diet. Foods that are rich in iron include artichokes, egg yolks, red meat, dark greens, dried fruits, and legumes. So, now you know what red blood cells do and how they are adapted. You have also learned about two types of anemia and how they may be treated. Please like and share our videos with your friends. If you have any questions that you want help with, just comment below. Well, that was a fantastic intro. Uh, well done, um, Rida and uh, and uh, the team did a fantastic job. Jeremy, you did a great job. We also have Maya uh, in our studios with us. Um, Dr. Safia, can you hear us? Sorry about this little glitch. I know you've been preparing a lot for this presentation. Walk us through your anemia uh, presentation. So, hello everyone. My name is Safia. And today we are going to discuss about anemia, its causes, symptoms, treatment and prevention. Okay. So, what is anemia? It is basically a condition in which the number of red blood cells or the hemoglobin concentration is lower than the normal. It's said to be anemia if the hemoglobin concentration is less than 13.5, uh -huh. while in women if it's less than 12 gram per deciliter. So the number that we need to remember right now is the 12 number in general, right? Is that yes, correct? Sir. Okay, very good. And what else is there for that? It shouldn't be below 12 and for men or women. Very good. So before going further, what is hemoglobin? Very good. So it is basically an iron rich protein that attaches oxygen from the lungs and it carries oxygen throughout the body to the tissues to supply it. So globally, 40% of the children are affected by anemia, while 30% of the pregnant women are affected by it and 37% of the and pregnant women are affected by it. So we just got to the bit where we said two uh, components were important for us. This is the hemoglobin that is relevant. And then the second bit was where we know that there is an iron that is somehow attached on this hemoglobin that is relevant to us. So what have you got next, Dr. Safia? Please, that was very nice. So in the macrocytic anemia, the IBC is smaller in size. While okay. in macrocytic anemia, the IBC size are larger than the normal and this is one of the way to classify anemia. So the most important way to classify is according to the causes. And the most important in it is the iron deficiency anemia. Apart from this, the vitamin B12 deficiency can also cause anemia and the folic acid deficiency. So so before we go on to the causes of uh, anemia, uh, Dr. Safia, if you were saying the hemoglobin is so important and that we need to maintain not only a number of hemoglobin, which is, which is about 12 or 13, you're also saying that the shape should look right for the hemoglobin. It should look right and it should have the right amount. Does that mean we all need iron? Yes, we all need iron. Even the children, the pregnant women, men, women, and the old, in the old age too. So if we take too much iron, Maya, that could be a problem. But definitely if we take too little iron, that has sort of like an, a direct effect. A, on the number of the uh, cells that are there 
But secondly, Dr. Safia is saying you, she said, mentioned about a volume that the R, that the hemoglobin has to maintain. And um, is there a number on how much iron you need? It's about 10 to 15 milligrams a day. That's absolutely right. All right. So, Dr. Safia, please do, uh, please do follow up on that and explain it to us. What, what are the different causes? And I just wanted to put that in so we're clear going forward. Yes. Apart from this iron deficiency anemia, the heavy menstruation can lead to the anemia as well because of the excessive blood loss. And Perfect. Plus that, that the infections, especially the worm infestations in the children, because it impairs with the nutrient absorption, that can lead to anemia as well. Infections include the prolonged infections, the chronic one, which include tuberculosis, HIV, and the parasitic infections, which include uh, schistosomiasis and ascariasis, because uh, they basically reside in the intestine and they like impair with the absorption of the iron in the intestine. So obviously, iron cannot enter into the body to make the hemoglobin. In addition to that, there is the vitamin B12. Which is needed for the which is also needed along with iron for the production of RBCs and its deficiency lead to vitamin B12 deficiency anemia. Oh, very very important, Dr. Safia. Do explain us a little bit more of that. You've just brought up a very important vitamin. My so own. basically, vitamin B12 is absorbed through the intestine mm -hmm. and. Uh, Vitamin B12 is mainly needed for the DNA production in the RBCs. So if it's deficient, then uh, RBCs cannot form in the proper shape and it leads to the anemia. Mm -hmm. So in adults, uh, 2.4 to like 3 microgram of, is needed. Of folate. Of B12. So the next cause is the hemolytic anemia in which uh, this is a specific condition which may occur due to infections, autoimmune diseases or it may be inherited in which the red blood cells when they move through the bloodstream, uh, they break down and it leads to the hemolytic, hemolytic anemia. Anemia is extremely common, affecting nearly one quarter of the world's population. Depending on the severity of the anemia, oftentimes some may not show any symptoms in the early stages. But for some with existing conditions, they can present with more serious signs and symptoms. Women of all ages are at special risk for iron deficiency. Children need extra iron during growth spurts. Females of childbearing age lose blood during menstruation with some losing much more than average, which is often referred to as heavy menstrual bleeding or abnormal uterine bleeding. Pregnancy also increases the woman's iron demands. Iron deficiency anemia can have serious adverse health consequences for the mother and child. Other conditions may cause bleeding, such as uterine fibroids, gastrointestinal bleeding, and ulcers. In infants and children, even mild anemia may delay mental and motor skills development. For patients undergoing surgery, both preoperative and postoperative anemia is associated with increased complications and increased exposure to blood transfusion risks. Ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and gastric bypass surgery are frequently associated with anemia. Reported rates vary widely but at least one third of patients with irritable bowel disease have iron deficiency anemia. Dr. Sofia, did you see that? That was fantastic. Because I think you've covered most of the things uh, uh, from that presentation. I think you're bringing, uh, you're going to bring home a very good message for everyone. Um, before we put up your sl next slide, just let's just ask the audience uh, and see, I want to ask them what are the symptoms that they have seen of a patient of being, a patient of being anemic. So the common one that has come up that they are tired, fatigue. Tired fatigue is one. Okay, we've got some brilliant brilliant responses here. We have 
You could be short of breath. That's a sign of anemia. You could have headaches. That's a sign of anemia. You could have heart palpitations can be exacerbated. And that's a sign um, of anemia and stuff. And you, you see people eating stuff that make you anemic. And that's very important as well. So a lot of stuff. So the symptoms which a person may observe if he or she is uh, suffering from anemia is a uh, person may feel dizziness, fatigue, fainting, or palpitations, and the shortness of breath. Uh, breath when or whenever he or she tries to do some work like climbing steps or any exer exertion work. And the signs include the yellowing of the sclera, the paleness of the skin, the coldness of the extremities, and the low blood pressure. Mm. So, in addition to that, so the diet history is very important to diagnose the type of anemia. Like either the person is taking the iron diet or not, vegetarian or not. The family history to like differentiate from the inherited anemias. History of any chronic infections as we have discussed earlier. And the menstrual history especially in the youngers. So, in addition to that, there are specific investigations which could help to identify the type of anemia and it includes complete blood picture, the total iron binding capacity and ferritin levels for the iron induction anemia as well, vitamin B12 and folate levels and hemoglobin electrophoresis. So before going towards the treatment, what could be the main reason in children to have the anemia? So the main reason is the unbalanced diet, the one in the adult as well, the iron deficiency the risk which is not sufficient with the iron and with the diseases like the parasitic inflammations in children lead to anemia. And towards the treatment, the uh, eat, to eat the iron rich food is the most important thing as we all know till now that iron is the most important part of the hemoglobin and its need for the production of hemoglobin and to transfer oxygen to the tissues as well. Okay. So okay. the iron rich foods include the green leafy vegetables, Excellent. the dried fruits, nuts, shellfish, lentils, and seafood. Next. So this is one of the slides showing the iron rich diet. Yeah. Which, which is similar to the last one. So let's move to the next one. In addition to that, the iron supplements could help to okay. treat the iron deficiency anemia as well. Perfect. While if the person is suffering from vitamin B12 deficiency, there are supplements for that along with the folic acid. There are specific treatment for the different types of anemias according to the cause. So to discuss one, uh, there is a sickle cell anemia. And to treat that, uh, we need the drug hydroxyurea and oxybrata. So, if the pregnant woman is suffering from anemia, uh, she may have increased risk to infection, uh, the preterm labor, and the postpartum hemorrhage. While in the child, it may lead to the anemia of infancy, low birth weight, immaturity, and the neural tongue tube defect if the person is suffering from the folate deficiency. Brilliant. Okay, next. And I think the prevention, I think this is the, the last slide. I think the prevention is the key. I think we're gonna, just going to leave that uh, one up. And I think diet and getting the source uh, for it is very, very important. Dr. Safiya, I've got to um, apologize. We've ran out of time again. Um, excellent, excellent presentation. Thank you very much for joining us and just sharing your knowledge with everyone. I'm sure a few of you or a few of them are going to take a few messages home i'm just getting the last question up what are people taking as a supplement supplement uh, again um and uh, i'm seeing some are taking b12 um i'm asking are they taking some multi-source vitamin um and i do want to discuss this some are saying yeah i know vitamin c and d but is there anyone taking it religiously regularly um and, and some and I've got I've got some answers like oh I'm taking B12 or I'm taking but they're just taking B12 why would you be just taking B12 of all the vitamins and not anything else I'm gonna discuss that uh, later on and I'm gonna put that up okay Jeremy what we have a winner from last time we had put out a question uh, about and I think our um, uh, the best answer came from uh, uh, 
Dr. Uh, Fatima Zora. Uh, Fatima Zora gave the best answer. So she is the prize winner for this uh, week. So she uh, and you can see her response on the uh, blog. It was considered by an independent panel, nothing to do with Dr. Khan. Um, three panelists or two panelists, at least I know, but a third panelist j- judged her to have do a response which was non, uh, uh, which was mostly from our discussion, and it was a non uh, GPT chat GPT or a Gemini response. So uh, Fat, uh, Fatma, well done, congratulations on b- uh, putting up that best blog. So the question for next week that the team have uh, put forward for you guys is how will you identify anemia in pregnant women and kids? All right. This is very interesting. How How is it different? How is it different from the others? We've discussed this. And how would you manage it? I know you're good, we're going to talk about it a little bit. So we're looking forward your, for your entries uh, by the end of the week. Mind you, we want you to put your entries. The newer system is going to have uh, you could share your responses on Facebook. You can share it with other friends or family members. Anyone can send a response. All right. I think that's what the important thing. Leave out your email contact. So we have a source so we can contact you back uh, and be able to. And if you win the prize, you'll you'll be able to get a, a certification as well as a your prize money going to it. And whoever However you want to get it, we'll get it across. So that's very uh, that's very nice. So please, please submit your responses in time. Next week's topic is going to be about chest pains. It's a very interesting topic. Dr. Maha is going to uh, discuss this with us. Uh, chest pain and heart attacks. Um, we want to discuss when you, when we want to know when you're having a, when someone's having a heart attack and you, what do you need to do? So it's a very interesting topic. We're going to discuss that um, next week. With that, I want to sum up. Thank you very much for everyone uh, joining us. I think the important thing is please don't forget to subscribe. I think we uh, we want you to uh, make sure that you put a like signal on the YouTube channel. I have only seen three so far. That's not good. Guys, we need your help. The team, I want to thank Rida. I want to thank Jeremy who's always stressed on Fridays um, and uh, uh, Farhana and the, the other social media team, including uh, Hamza and Maya. Thank you, Maya, for your discussions and, and giving us a, a, another insight about uh, the discussions. We want to see you next week. Please bring your family and friends as well so they can have a, a discussion with us. And don't forget to put your, like I said, the like comments in this. It's very, very important for us and share it with your family, friends. Have a good weekend. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much.